Thanks for joining us on our regular look at the local game. We've got VJ Vic from 442 Malaysia here. Hi Ross, hi everyone. We've also got Nicholas Arnil from hi. ESPN FC. Uh, you know guys, you can follow us on Facebook. It's Malaysian Football Weekly. We are also on All Sports Asia. Do check out the website. It's allsportsasia.net. Uh, also found on Twitter, at All Sports Asia. Right, so much to talk about. As usual, tons of highlights in a week's worth of football. Uh, we're going to start with the MSL. Now, 15 matches played uh, in the season so far. Seven left, uh, left until the end of the season. First question to you guys. Can JDT stay unbeaten in the league? Yeah, definitely. Uh, they can. Will they is another question. Uh, but they have what it takes to stay unbeaten. Right, uh, about a week ago, JDT were 2-1 winners in Sarawak. It was uh, Marco Antonio Santos and Azni Taib who scored for them. Um, standard win. Yeah, standard win. Uh, really good goals as well uh, from the JDT. Uh, but they were struggling towards the end, you know. Uh, Kedah pulled back uh, one very late goal and they were rallying very late on. Uh, in fact, they were unlucky not to have uh, seen the equalizer. But uh, that's the kind of team JDT are, you know, they are capable of getting big wins and also eking out uh, resilient wins when they have to. Uh, on Tuesday night, JDT notched up their sixth consecutive victory when they beat Kelantan 1-0. Uh, um, are we surprised, uh, VJ, that there weren't more goals involved or 1-0 or standard? It's good enough. Well, I think uh, it would be disrespectful to be expecting more goals uh, against Klantan. Klantan are not whipping uh, boys and uh, Popov, I think, is putting on uh, a strict front. I I'm still hearing there are a lot of internal problems. Yeah, they've, they've just paid some salaries and, and all that. But uh, on the field, I think uh, they're looking, I won't say excellent, but better. Better and a bit more difficult to break. and. You see a bit more fire in, in, in them so well let's hope Kanta mm. can actually pick up and well it was only a few years ago that they were challenging for the title well they were treble winners not too yeah, long exactly. ago were they I was watching uh, that game and um, the first half it was all one-way traffic uh, for JDT but uh, Kelantan did well uh, to keep things tight you know they held the fort uh, till half time it was just a very uh, a lapse in defence which uh, caused them uh, an early second half goal. But uh, Klantan did have their chances and as uh, Vijay mentioned, uh, they are not an easy team to break uh, under pop off this hmm. season. Okay, well, will, will, will he last though? Okay, can he last the season? Will he still be there next year, you reckon? The turnaround for <laughs> Klantan is pretty high. But he may start next year, but how many matches that's... That's anyone's guess. That's, that's yeah. In, in a nutshell, that is Malaysian football. All right, Felder United are hanging on to JDT's coattails. They too scored maximum points from their last two games. Uh, they were 2 1 winners at PDRM last week, and just a few days ago, they put more distance between themselves and third place Salango when they won 2 1 in Shah Alam. Good game it was. Yeah, you had the game, right? Yeah, I, I, I was, uh, well, it was a tight affair in the first half, but I think Felda were just uh, keeping their guns back to them and uh, just wanting to just do a professional job instead of going all out because the fixture list is tight and talking to the players, uh, even the Felda players said, look, you're tired and uh, Fokido was happy to be taken off after two goals despite being able to get a... Well, possibly getting a hat trick against his former employers, mm. but he was like, "No, I'm happy because <coughs> I was tired." Well, uh, Nicholas Anil actually got to speak with uh, <coughs> Felder's two-goal hero, Francis Fokido, just earlier this week. You're obviously leading the Golden Boot race. I'm sure that's that's one of the the most foremost thought on your mind at the moment to perhaps win that title. Yeah, but uh, my. My my achievement this year is I want to win a Malaysian Cup.
football and uh, the league. I'm not so much about the golden ball, but as a striker, I also want to go for golden ball. But my first thought is to uh, win the league. Okay. Do you think that's uh, possible um, given uh, the tight uh, fixture schedule and also uh, the squad? Do you think uh, Felder are capable of challenging on both fronts? Yeah, you know, Felder is a good team and uh, we are like a family. So once uh, the team is like a family, mm -hmm. you will succeed. So I know it's also tiring to play every three years, but... Like today, we got a good rest. So okay. I believe that we can work harder. Okay. And right. And you've always been doing well in all the clubs you've played for. This is your fifth uh, club in Malaysia. But what makes this season extra special compared to the other clubs? Um, this season is one of the. Um, it's very special to me is that because today, and this year is going to be the first year I'm going to win the Malaysian Cup. Okay. I, believe, I mean the, the league. Okay. That's what I believe I'm going to do. Okay. And then playing in Felda is um, it's a kind of different uh, achievement for me because being in other teams it was very hard for me. The, the, I mean, like the togetherness that I'm seeing here. Okay. Then, in compared to other teams, it's different. Okay. Here, I feel more, much happier, like a home. Okay. Yeah. All the players are together, and then compared to the other teams, it's a big gap. Okay. Okay. So I really love here. Okay. Do you think that would be the driving factor to make Kedah go all the way, not only the league but also the Malaysia Cup? Yeah, because it's. If, as you can see, everybody together, we come to training, we laugh together, we fight together. There's no one person, there's no big player. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is the, the team together as family. Okay. And if you can get this in the team, you're going to get success. Right. Yeah. And um, I understand you also played for the national team uh, last month. You scored as well. Um, looking forward for more appearances with Liberia and also perhaps, you know, to start playing in the African Nations Cup and bigger tournaments after this? Yeah, that is my dream to go to African Nations Cup because uh, when my country was going to our Nations Cup, I was a little boy during George Weah and my coach, Diva Preselin. Right. I was a baby, so, and I have the opportunity right now to be in the squad. Right. To qualify my national team right now. I feel yeah. very much as, you know, excited. Right. Uh, but one question I would keep you for long. Um, at your age, 30 years old, approaching the twilight of the career, what else do you want to achieve? I mean, besides uh, winning titles, is there anything else? Yeah, I mean, as a footballer, your first dream is now as a player. And in the end, your second career will be as a coach. Right. So, my, you know, I'm looking forward to be a coach in the, in the end of my career. Right. But... Being a, a real professional, keeping your body, sleeping on time, eating good food, I believe I can go a little bit longer than some other players. Right. Okay. And when you say coach, do you perhaps coming back as a coach in Malaysia? Yeah, coming back as a coach in Malaysia, anywhere God take me, because that would be my second dream. Right. Okay. So guys, can you see Francis Fokido as a manager? What kind of a manager will he be? I think it's uh, a little bit too early to say. Um, as he mentioned uh, in, the pit, uh, in the interview, um, he's still got a couple of years left in him. Uh, he's still a very fine athlete. Uh, he obviously takes care of himself really well. Um, and um, I think he could go on for at least another five to six years. Uh, but, um, well, managerial part, um, he has that intent which shows exactly. ambition on yeah. his part. Yeah. Um, good for him on that part, but I think he's probably got another 100 goals in him. He's already scored 100 goals in the uh, Malaysian League. He's probably got a lot more to give before he moves on to the next phase of his career. We don't see many managers from Liberia as well. Exactly. No. No. Um, yeah, uh, if you're George Will, you become the president. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Kedah, back to the MSL. Kedah are now up to fourth spot. Uh, last weekend, they were 1-0 winners over T-Team, thanks to a stunner from their new signing, Shane Smeltz. Um, this was a great goal. Just a setup uh, as well. Um, and, and 
this New Zealander, well, he, he's getting the goals now, right? 34 year old Shane Smeltz. Still early days for him, and uh, I think there was some talk about how, how long is he going to take to adapt uh, at the start of uh, when he first started playing uh, in the middle of this month. Mm. I think, like how every other player would need, you need to give them time to adapt. And, but if he but, goes but on the yeah, for I mean, for a striker, your 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 currency is gold. He's yeah. he's come up with four already yeah. so far, yeah. and you can't complain, right? So, um, I spoke to him uh, earlier in the week, and uh, even he was surprised at how fast he settled into the Malaysian league. Um, he tells me that you know he came, he comes from the Australian league where they had an off season, so he's coming off five to six weeks of not playing any competitive action, and just to just come in and acclimatize himself. To the Malaysian League and score four goals in four games. Mm. What, what a start. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, unfortunately, though, Kedah came up against a resilient uh, Penang in midweek, and Penang were 3 2 winners. It was a win that moved Penang off the bottom. Was it a resilient Penang, or was it a, <laughs> a Penang which, which are not tired compared to the rest of the 11 teams in the league? Because if you ask me that I, in the relegation race, I think Penang must stay up because they're not playing uh, every two, three days, like, sorry, every three, four days. Like, exactly, and they're uh, the only the team. Teams. They're mm -hmm. the only yeah. team of they're not playing. They actually have a big advantage, and I'm not surprised to see them beat Kedah. Mm. Mm. And, and the, the Korean uh, come good this time with, with a couple of goals. We, we know he's capable. We see him every season. <laughs> yep. He's the only player, in fact, to have scored more goals than appearance so far. Seung Jok I Min. Mean, um, what a player he is, you know. Uh, he's not a player known for his goals. Uh, applied his trade mostly in the Korean League. Uh, I think the most goals he scored in a season was nine, and now he has five in three. So uh, he's been one of the main reasons for Penang's turnaround, as uh, Boyan rightly pointed out. You know, it's not only his goals that uh, have contributed to Penang's. A, a sort of mini revival is also his overall contribution in yeah. the field uh, together with Ranty Martins. You know, Ranty Martins, uh, even though he was not fully fit against uh, T Team, uh, he still wanted, insisted on playing, and uh, that just showed uh, his, yeah. his perseverance. It's the boy on attitude rubbing yes. off on people, <laughs> I think. Uh, all right, well, Perak are up to sixth now uh, after a good week, two wins. And it started with this 2-0 defeat of Tranganu last weekend. Um, Kenny Palraj with a screamer to start things that off. Fantastic. <laughs> I, I think he he was one of the better players yeah. in the first half. Uh, it, it's good seeing a former Harima Muda player come up, uh, being given the chance and actually taking it. I uh, was talking to some other guys and uh, they were not surprised that he scored a goal like that. He's done it before. Mm. I mean, uh, good good for Perak because they followed that win up with a 2-1 win in Pahang on Tuesday. Um, let's okay. Let's concentrate on Pahang a little bit now. Um, they've taken the plunge. These, these were what Malaysia Cup champions. Yeah. Uh, they were constantly uh, AFC Cup uh, qualifiers. Now they're fighting relegation. I think they're fighting among themselves. Why'd you say that? I don't think it's a positive atmosphere in in camp. Uh, it doesn't look good. I, I don't get that impression. Uh, I don't see the players. Well, I see some players working hard together with each other, for each other and all that. But I don't see all 11 players on the team actually working as a team. And, uh, well, that's pretty much sums up Pahang today. Mm. Yeah, um, the consensus from some of the players as well, uh, just the body language, as you mentioned, um, does not show the right attitude and I don't think they're entirely happy playing under Razib for whatever reason that may be um, and um, it's clearly evident in, in their performance you know very lethargic uh, which a lot of teams are facing at the moment but Pahang even more so they just don't seem to want to soldier on despite being in the predicament that, that they are in at the moment mm. and um, yeah just the last game you can see foolish error by the goalkeeper and um, that's not the thing you should be doing uh, at this stage, mm. given the, the support that you have week in, week out. Well, whilst Pahang prop up the table, uh, we should mention this week that uh, TMJ came out and uh, gave Felder some backing in, in the title race. He, he alluded to the fact that Felder were the bigger team, they had government money behind them, and JDT were a small private affair. Um, care to comment? 
reverse psychology, <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah, but uh, then again, I don't know. He, he probably, maybe his ploy of getting under certain team skin. Uh, if I was Felda, I would not bother too much about it because they have not uh, been been uh, preoccupied with whatever GDT has been saying. They just gone about their business and uh, done whatever yeah. they need to do. And that's what they should be doing. You know, the only way to prove your dictator wrong, sarcastically or not, is to get results on the pitch. Yeah, true. All right, let's have a look at the MSL table then. JDT with uh, 12 wins and 3 draws uh, are still undefeated. Now, now Felder, we mentioned they're doing well to hang in there. Kedar, though, 7 points uh, off Selangor in 4th. Now, Selangor are a distance away, 13 off the top. Um, how do you see that one? Uh, Kedar, can they catch Selangor? Can they take third? Well, that would be embarrassing for Selangor, right? Well, the the thing is, Selangor's performance, uh, I don't think it's going to happen because Kedah are also not very consistent. So you've got you've got two consistent teams at the top and you've got a bunch of inconsistent teams who can't seem to string uh, three, four wins together and then, from third until twelfth. Yep, and you've got Penang now. They're off the bottom, we, we mentioned, replaced by Pahang. Yep. Um, yeah. So round sixteen then takes place next Wednesday, and uh, the standout tie here has got to be Penang against JDT, right? Yes. Um, this is a big ask now. If, if Penang are, are you, you mentioned arrested team and all that, this would be the big one for them, right? If they can get this skull, they'll almost certainly survive. Yeah, but they it? don't have enough quality to go against JDT, who have got who have got what 25, 26 players who. who they can feel and rotate from one match to another. Mm. So it's going to be two well rested teams. Pahang travel to sixth place, Kerda. Um, do we see any respite for Razib Ismail's boys? Can they get a point on the road? Uh, well, if they are intent on staying up, this is the games they should be looking at to put points on the board. Uh, Kerda are also quite lethargic. They have been traveling from north to south with, both, with commitments in both cups. Um, Pahang, well, I think the focus should now solely be in the MSL and not the Malaysia Cup. They have not collected any points in the Malaysia Cup. Uh, they should just, I don't know, for me, give up that race and just focus on survival. So their energy should be focused towards trying to get a result against Kedah. All right, brilliant stuff. That concludes then our look at the MSL. Uh, we'll be back in a bit with our Malaysia Cup look. On all sports Asia. Welcome back. We've got VJ Vic from 442 Malaysia and Nicholas Anil from ESPN FC along with us. And we're taking a look at the Malaysia Cup. Four groups, of course, it's broken up into uh, two matches played so far. And it's being run concurrently with the league season. Before we start looking at these groups, uh, are they playing too much football? Our oh, guys, two MSL games in a week, and then you've got Malaysia Cup. Even the BPL boys don't get such a beating, well, do they? Two MSL games in a week and all that doesn't sound so bad, but then it, it sounds bad when you look at the number of games they're playing off of 44 days. I think it's uh, 13 or 14 matches over 44 days. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. And uh, I think uh, the Professional Footballers Association <coughs> of Malaysia they came up with an infographic uh, citing the American Journal of Sports Medicine saying that players need a minimum of three days of full three days rest uh, in order to prepare for the next match in order to avoid injuries in fact they have a 68 percent chance of avoiding injuries if they have their full rest but well we know for a fact they don't get three days they are getting are close right? to a full three days if you look at a match being played on tuesday and then play, being played on Wednesday, you're getting somewhere close to 72 hours but it's not there you're probably getting 68 69 okay. hours. Yeah, if you include you know, traveling and all yeah, that, that takes up a lot of your energy as it's well. It's not ideal, definitely. I, I I was just actually doing a piece for 442. It, it's going to be out uh, pro probably later this evening or, okay. or, or tomorrow about recovery ways and what players and clubs need to do. And because this stretch, it's all just about recovery. You can forget about working on yeah. strategies Training. and, and all <laughs> yeah. that. It's purely recoveries. And some teams, they give their players a day off after games, especially uh, if the players are of an older age and all that. 
Okay, all right, let, let's concentrate then on uh, the Malaysia Cup. Uh, group A at the moment, we've got Kuda leading the way in Group A. It, it's still very open, uh, just a point separating KDT2, Sarawak and TT in Group A. Yeah, uh, but runaway leaders has to be Kuda and uh, I think if they beat JDT2 in this uh, coming fixture, they're all but certain to so make the... Surprisingly, both Johor teams yet to find a win. JDT2 plodded their way to their second draw in the group last Tuesday and Kuda were impressive. 2-0 winners against T-Team. Um, do you reckon that they look at this and, and think, we have a chance in the cup, Kuda? Yeah, seal the game. Oh, they reach the final last year. Get, get, get to the book, their quarter-final berth, and then they can start focusing on climbing up the MSL. I think this game is a very pivotal game for Kada in the sense that a victory would all but assure them a quarter-final place and uh, they can afford to take it easy in the next three games and you know focus on trying to climb up the MSL table. Of course, uh, Shane Smeltz scored uh, his first goals for Kada in that game. Now, um, tonight, Friday night, T-Team entertains Sarawak. Uh, both teams will go searching for their first win and it's Kada versus JDT2, how do we see it panning out? Yeah, um, as I mentioned, uh, Kada definitely our favourites uh, playing at home. They've done well uh, in the uh, Malaysia Cup so far. The only team to have recorded 100% uh, record with two wins. They've also scored the most goals. Um, so and it's a second tier side too. Yeah. So we have to win. Mm. For, for you, who's going to follow Kada through? Ah, uh, for the JDT2. Um, all right then, uh, in Group B, it is a much, much tighter affair. Just a one point separating Kelantan, Selangor and KL. Uh, last Wednesday, Selangor and Kelantan served up a six-goal thriller. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but it didn't do either team any good. Yeah, but you, you, you look at KL and Pang, the other two teams in the group, and I'm sure Kelantan and Selangor will be like, you know what, yeah, we'll still get through. They're still ahead, despite... Well, holding each other. Uh, th this Saturday then, it's Kelantan versus KL, uh, Pahang versus Selangor. Do Selangor need to win the Malaysia Cup this year? It's the uh, only salvation. Um, They're so the far off in the league. league. And, and also Zainal's job's on the line. Uh, fans, are, fans are already clamouring <laughs> for Mehmet to return. I don't know if that's possible or if he even wants the job. but. That just shows the dissatisfaction. Any day, he loves Selangor absolutely. Yeah, uh, but but do, do, do I mean was Zainal the right move now in retrospect? Because <coughs> Mehmet didn't do much wrong when he was told to leave. Yeah, but if you look at the, the league when Mehmet was around, it wasn't convincing as well. Uh, and even in the group stages last year in the Malaysia Cup, it was well, pretty much hanging. And it was only later on where they came out of their shell and started playing really well and all that. I, I think a lot of criticism, yeah, style of play has been boring. But if you look at the league and you look at the cup and you look at how much Slango have spent, what are you expecting? Mm. I, I, I was talking to someone the other day and the only difference is if you're looking at the league, the gap between Slango and Felda. But do they deserve that spot? Yeah, definitely. Top two teams are spending way more. Okay. That's a good point. Uh, money. Uh, it's all about the money. Um, Alright, in, in Group C, PDRM lead the way and uh, JDT searching for their first win. PKNS already uh, look out of it with uh, minus three goal difference after two matches. Now the MSL champions JDT were held to their second draw in Malacca last week. Uh, let's talk about how good Malacca were. Yeah, uh, Malacca... I are. mean, they're a Premier League team. This must have been the glamour tie for them, right? Uh, but then again, you can see that they are not overwrought uh, by the occasion at all. You know, they have just been taking so much of confidence from uh, their Premier League exploits, and uh, you can see that it shows in in the Malaysia Cup as well. Uh, and I would I would really tip them for quarter final berth. Okay, well, JDT uh, had a one-one draw against PDRM last Tuesday. Mario Gomez. Um, came out and said how disappointed he was that they conceded a late equaliser. Of course, they were two up in their first game and conceded two goals. Is that a problem? 
Well, uh, they have not been fielding a full full strength squad in the Malaysia Cup. Uh, the Malaysia Cup serves very little purpose to them. I think they've made that clear. So, I think no one's gonna be really upset if JDT don't progress out of the group stages and all that because they've also got the AFC Cup and the Super League, two very important competitions as compared to the Malaysia Cup, which isn't offered them anything. Yeah, but uh, I really wouldn't understand why is it you would not want to go for the Malaysia Cup. They got uh, a big enough score to win everything. Yeah, and it's the only domestic title which has uh, eluded them. Uh, so, uh, from, if I was Mario Gomez or even uh, the owner of uh, GDT, there would be every reason for me to go after the Malaysia Cup. I mean, you are in a group which you can easily talk and go through. Uh, but, um, I don't know, there, there seems to be a jinx uh, uh, for them up till now. Uh, we, Gomez, that, that's partly due to Gomez as well, you know, just sw uh, switching the squad and making so much of changes against uh, PDRM. He made eight changes from the team which beat Sarawak. So sometimes it's not easy when you have a uh, second, uh, first 11 coming into the side and, you know, trying to readjust with each other's style of play. But uh, JDT for me should go for the Malaysia Cup as much as possible. Okay, well, uh, Perak uh, were impressive. 4-1 winners against PKNS the last time out. Um, they fancy a good run in the cup, VJ. Fair mm. Mm. Well, I think every team will fancy a good But did, are they capable? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I don't think they have what it takes. Uh, they've got a young squad who spend a lot of time in the injury room as well, in and out. Uh, you don't know who's going to be available. Uh, and if you compare men to men, they were easily the 6th, 7th best squad around. Mm. So it's going to be an uphill battle. Still, it was impressive. 4-1 against PKNS. Um, it's Perak versus JDT then. And it's PKNS against PDRM on Saturday. Do we see any shocks? Do we see JDT getting their first win? Or do we see Perak causing it? I think it won't be easy. It's always been fairly yeah, mm. uh, it's a lot of bad blood. Uh, yeah. Dating back to last season. I, I, I just don't want to check my timeline. Well, what's going to happen after that? <laughs> yeah, but on pitch, uh, Pera, Pera are not going to roll over easily. They have been doing well at home. The fans are slowly coming back. JDT are going to have a tough time. Okay. Well, in Group D, then, everyone is on three points. You've got Felder, uh, Malacca, Tranganu, and Negri all neck and neck. Felder United are top, but they were surprisingly beaten by Tringanu last Wednesday. Yeah. How, how is that possible? Or, or I mean, do, do you turn off? You're, you're doing so well in the league like Felder United. When Malaysia Cup comes, obviously there's a bit of shuffling, few 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 changes. That obviously upsets the team that much, doesn't it? When you do things like that. Yeah, it does. Uh, but they don't really have a choice. Yes. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, it's too many games over a short period and <coughs> if you do not do this, you're going to risk injuries. Yeah. And when that happens, then you're handicapped for permanently for a reasonable period. Like, if, if it's a slight injury, then yeah, it's only off for, for a week or two. Or if it's a long-term injury, then you're going to lose some of your best players. Do you want to risk it? I, I wouldn't risk it. I felt like looking at this group, you've got two, two second-tier sides and you've got a Super League side who are struggling to even win a match or, or even get a point mm. at, at this moment. So, but if, if you're, why wouldn't you take? Why would you want to take this seriously? True. I mean, okay. If you fell the United, you're two points off JDT at the top. Do you think? Hang on a sec. Let's concentrate on the league here. Let, let's let's not bother too much about the Malaysia Cup. Would, would that how you be? How you thinking? Well, the consensus from Irfan is. Uh, I mean. Uh, as all coaches, he's taking it one game at a time. He says he has enough depth to shuffle his squad. And looking at the table, all three teams tied on three points after two games. If I was Felda, I would think, why not? I mean, yes, there is that lethargic factor and uh, also the, the rotation of the squad. But you are in a position where you could make the quarterfinals of the Malaysia Cup, which is the most prestigious cup tournament in the country. So, um, just go for it. Um, again, it's down to Irfan on how he rotates the squad, how much breaks the players get, uh, how fast they recover. But this is a very um, uh, 
promising uh, position for Nanda to get out of the group. Okay, well, Negri Sambilan are bottom only on goal difference. They were 3 2 winners. Uh, against Malacca last Tuesday. Vijay, do you see any of these Premier League teams uh, go getting through out of Group D? Well, I, I, I would actually pick Malacca or Nuguri over Trungano any day. Uh, on current form, any time. Because uh, Trungano, there are a lot of internal problems going on. Uh, one of their players came up and vented out his frustration uh, on uh, Instagram as well. And it's not good. I, it's, I, I think. They, they, a, their star man is not getting his nasi. <laughs> or, or, well, yeah, I mean, well, he says he's getting his nasi daga. He says that he, he, he loves that, but he's not happy with the, uh, the management. The there. decisions being made by the management and, yeah. and all that. Yeah, uh, something brewing in Tringanu. So it's Malacca versus Felder on Friday night, and uh, Tringanu versus Negri Sambilan. So after two rounds, and who's going to win the Malaysia Cup? It's very hard to say. Uh, now that we have this format of having the league and the Malaysia Cup run concurrently, you know, one team could do so well in the league and then the next day they could plummet in the Malaysia Cup, just like how GDP are experiencing at the moment. It's very unpredictable at the moment. Uh, possibly after two games you ask the same question. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to make a lucky <laughs> pick and just shake it up. Really? Yeah. Because they, they were finalists. They, they know, they no, know no. how to play yeah. games. They are touching a hole. side and uh, if you look at them and if they bring out their A game, I, I think they can beat anyone in the league. Well, they've really shown they can beat yeah. the JDT. Yeah. Okay, brilliant stuff. Right, um, that's all the time we have. Don't forget to check our YouTube channel, All Sports Asia. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to say thanks to the guys. Many thanks to BJ Vic. Thanks, Ross. Thank you, everyone. Thanks to Nicholas Arnell. Thank you. Have a good weekend. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye now. Follow us on Facebook and tune in next week for more Malaysian Football Weekly on All Sports Asia.